Fringing reefs. Here's some general information. They're directly attached to the shoreline. They're the most common of the coral reefs that we're going to look at. They're particularly sensitive to freshwater runoff and sediment that comes from the land. And they have flattened disc-shaped colonies, also known as micro atolls or small branching colonies. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. No, you are. Sorry. Geography. Uh, fringing reefs are common near Hawaii and in the Caribbean, always along the coastline. Um, the longest fringing reef is located in the Red Sea and runs about 40, about 4,000 kilometers. Um, they are directly attached to the shore and sometimes actually resemble beach in some aspects. And they border the coasts. So that's a little diagram, and you can see the fringing is kind of like on the side of the edge. So we're looking at the points of recognition. It has a submerged horizontal reef flap, which is the closest part to the land. And it grows in narrow bands or fringes along the shore, which we saw in the previous picture. And it has three main parts, an inner reef flap, an outer reef slope, and a reef crest. Normally, the inner and outer are kind of just dropped, and it's called reef flat or reef slope. And the reef crest is the part of the reef that's closest to the surface and also gets the most sunlight. shoreline it kind of like the reef flats very just like right on the shore and then it just kind of drops and that's where the so reef this would be like the reef crest and then here is the reef slope <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so parts of the reef. So you have the reef flat, um, which is the widest part of the reef. It's shallow, um, and so sometimes it's exposed at low tide. It slopes very gently toward the sea, and um, since it's closest to the shore, it is most strongly affected by sediments and freshwater runoff. Then you have the reef crest. Um, it's the shallow edge of the reef slope, so it's right after the reef flat and right before like the large slope. Um, it usually has more luxuriant growth than all the other areas, so more coral growth than the reef slope and the reef flat. And it also may consist of an algal ridge, which is to protect the coral from like wave action. Then you have the reef slope, which can be quite steep, sometimes nearly vertical. Um, 
and it is the part of the reef with the densest cover and most coral species. So to put what we just told you with the visual, um, you have the reef lab, the algal ridge up here, right above the reef crest, and then the reef slope. Um, some other facts that might not have been mentioned on the slide before is that uh, the reef lab has more plant growth than coral. Um, and uh, the the reef crest ha gets the most amount of sunlight. Um, and everything else is kind of mentioned on the other side. <coughs> but just so you get a visual of that. So the way the fringing reef is created is it can only form around new islands. And it forms when larvae attach to hard surfaces. It needs a hard surface to, take, to grow. It can't grow on any soft land. grown by larvae that attach to the hard surface. And one of the three conditions it requires is it needs to be in warm, shallow, and clear water. And when it comes to the fringing reef, living coral are only prominent on the outer edge, so near the reef crest and the reef slope. So the reef that I chose to focus on is the, cor the fringing reefs in the Red Sea. Um, the Red Sea is the northernmost area of the Indian Ocean that has coral growth. Um, in the Red Sea, fringing reef platforms are over 5,000 years old. Um, the entire coastal reef complex extends along some 2,000 kilometers, kilometers sorry, um, of shoreline. Uh, in the Red Sea, the corals have developed an unusually high tolerance to extreme temperatures, salinity, and occasional turbidity. Um, these conditions would be lethal to corals elsewhere, but uh, corals here have adjusted to it. Um, the dominant, most actively growing corals include species of the genera uh, Acropora and Perites. Um, which are just types of coral. A couple more facts. Um, in the Red Sea, the water is exceptionally clear due to lack of river discharge and low rainfall. Um, out of about 1,200 recorded reef fish, they're around 10% are endemic, which means they're found nowhere else. Um, 
and there are about 300 hard coral species recorded in the Red Sea. So I did the Ningaloo Reef in Australia. It's located off the northwest coast of Australia. Uh, it's 260 kilometers long. And it's one of the largest fringing reefs in Australia. Um, and one thing that's unique about it is it has one of the largest concentration of whale sharks compared to any other reef. And it's also a marine park, so it's protected kind of like the Great Barrier Reef. Then we have our bibliography and our literature site. the Indian Ocean, it's right in between um, like uh, the Middle East and like Egypt, that area. Just give um, everyone an idea of where that is. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you.